Hi, welcome to the Bright Talk webinar on network verification. My name is Nikhil Handigaur. I'm a co-founder of Forward Networks. So today uh, we're going to look at network verification and mathematical modeling. And in particular, we'll focus on Forward Enterprise, the flagship product of Forward Networks that brings network verification to networks today. A little bit of a background about Forward Networks. So Forward Networks was founded five years ago with the goal of changing the way networks are built, operated, and evolved. Before Forward, my co-founders and I got our PhDs from Stanford, where we built some of the foundational pieces of software-defined networking. At Forward, we have brought together a world-class team of experts in modern distributed systems, in networking, and user interface, and have been funded by some of the top VCs. Uh, and our goal is to take on some of the most challenging and some of the most fun problems in the field of networking. So what is this problem that we are going after? If you look at tools available today to run and manage networks, at a high level, we have some tools to design networks. We have tools to deploy configurations in an automated way. And we have tools to monitor live traffic in the network. At Forward, we believe that the tools and capabilities that we have today are fundamentally inadequate to run today's business critical networks that are becoming increasingly large, complex, and hybrid in multiple ways. These enterprise networks typically consist of thousands of devices, switches, routers, load balancers, and firewalls coming from multiple vendors. And they tend to be a combination of physical and virtual, legacy and SDN, overlay and underlay, on-prem and cloud, so it's basically a hybrid of everything. So at Forward, our goal is to close this gap by bringing fundamentally new capabilities to understand and diagnose issues whenever they arise in the network, to test and verify the end-to-end -end behavior of the network, and to validate changes even before they're made in the actual production network. And the technology we are pioneering is called network verification which provides a fundamentally new way to understand and analyze the network's behavior. Today, I'm going to show some of these capabilities via a demo of our flagship product called Forward Enterprise, which brings network verification to today's enterprise networks without requiring any changes to the network. No hardware refresh, no agents. So, What is Forward Enterprise? How does it work? So Forward Enterprise is a, is a software platform that's delivered either on-prem or via the cloud. At a high level, the platform connects to all the devices in the network, the switches, the routers, the load balancers, the firewalls, physical or virtual, and extracts the configuration and dynamic forwarding state from these devices. And then, it builds a behaviorally accurate model of the network in software. Using our core algorithms called header space analysis, it then reasons about every possible way in which any packet can be forwarded by this network, not just the traffic that's currently flowing through the network. And on top of this core platform, we offer a number of applications. The three key applications that we're going to look today are search, verify, and predict. So let's double click on some of the items here. At the core of the Forward Enterprise platform is a behavioral model or a mathematical model. So what, what does it mean? What is it? So very simply, a behavioral model looks at the configuration and forwarding state of a device and, and all the devices in the network and determines how a network forwards, transforms, or drops a packet when it arrives at a device. It basically performs this analysis on every possible packet that can ever arrive at the network and arrive at the network basically at every device, every interface. So as you can imagine, if we were to naively enumerate every single possible packet arriving at every interface of every device, this problem, uh, and then determine how the network would forward, transform, or drop it, this problem would basically be intractable. So the trick here is to perform this analysis on a class of packets and scale it using algorithms and mathematics, hence the name mathematical model. With this behavioral model, we can start answering questions like, 
what are all the packets that can ever get from server A to server B? Or is there any way any traffic can get to my secure zone from a non-secure zone? Or is there any traffic that can reach my secure zone bypassing the firewall? Now the key here is that this behavioral model allows us to understand and validate the behavior of the network independent of the traffic that is actually flowing through it. With this behavioral model at the core, Forward Enterprise has three key applications that exposes the power of this model. The first application is search. Search basically provides the ability to understand and explore a network's behavior in a consumable way. So using a Google-like interface, you can search for any potential traffic and see how the network is forwarding, transforming, or dropping this traffic. Our customers find it extremely valuable for quick investigation at the front end of a trouble ticket or an outage. The next application is Verify. Verify basically provides the ability to validate that the actual behavior of the network matches the intended policy. Now this is useful for post-change verification to make sure that any changes that have been made to the network actually have the intended effect and have no unintended consequences. And the third application that we're going to look at today is called Predict. Predict basically provides the ability to try a change within the model in software and see what effects these changes have without touching any of the production network. This is useful for pre-change testing, testing candidate changes before pushing them to the production network. Now let's see all of these applications in action in a demo. A little bit of a context for the demo. So here you're looking at an enterprise network. It consists of two data centers. The Atlanta data center on the left, San Jose data center on the right, interconnected by an MPLS backbone. This network consists of a variety of devices, switches, routers, load balancers, and firewalls from a variety of vendors, Cisco, Juniper, Arista, F5, Palo Alto Networks, VMware, and so on. In this network, in this demo, we want to bring up a web service and then make it accessible from the internet over HTTP. On the surface, this looks like a pretty simple, straightforward task. But this seemingly simple task is actually quite nuanced. Behind the scenes, there are multiple stakeholders who all have different responsibilities and concerns. The app engineer wants to know if this web application will have end-to-end -end connectivity from the internet over HTTP. The network engineer cares about the networking layer, the forwarding and uh, the switching and routing elements. So he wants to know if the networking layer is correctly configured to deliver the traffic to its intended destination. And the security engineer cares about the firewalls. He wants to know if the firewalls are correctly letting the expected traffic through and blocking all the unwanted traffic. Now let's see how they can all interact around forward enterprise to accomplish this task. I have switched the view now. And here, what you're seeing is the forward enterprise GUI. And you're basically looking at pretty much the same network that we just described. So in advance, forward enterprise has connected to all these devices, collected the configuration and state from these devices, and built this behavioral model, and computed all possible flows, the, all possible flows that can exist in, the, in this network. Basically, every possible way in which any packet can be forwarded by this network. Now, the first question is whether the web application, when it's brought up, will have end-to-end -end connectivity from the internet over HTTP. The application engineer uses forward search to see if such a traffic is possible at all or not. Here, at the top, we see a Google-like search bar. And here, he searches for traffic coming from Atlanta Internet, which is the internet location within the Atlanta data center headed to the public public web of the web application that is to be brought up. He's interested in HTTP traffic, and he wants to know if this traffic will be delivered. Now, let's, let's, let's look at what we're seeing here. On the left side, we see that, we see in bold that there are no results found. 
Now, what does this mean? This means that, so behind the scenes, the, what this means is among all the possible flows, all the possible traffic paths that could ever exist in this network, there is no traffic path or flow that matches the search criteria that, that has been specified here. In other words, when this web application is brought up, it will not have connectivity from the internet over HTTP. And, and the key here is that we can make this assertion based on the based on the configuration and state of the network, independent of the traffic that is actually flowing through the network right now, and even in advance of the web application being brought up. Okay, so the application engineer sees that this is a problem. When the, application, when the web app is brought up, it will not work. So what he does, he creates a ticket for the network engineer. Simultaneously, he's going to create a check using forward verify. On the top right here, I'm going to click Save As, and I will save this as a check. Let's go to Forward Verify and uh, see a few things there. Here in Advance, we have pre-populated a number of checks in Forward Verify. So these checks together comprise our policy or intent, how we expect the network to behave. There are two types of checks here. Configuration correctness checks, or what we call predefined checks. These are basically uh, checks that check for general configuration correctness properties, such as VLAN consistency, MTU consistency, port channel consistency, and so on. There are also a whole bunch of end-to-end -end traffic checks that specify what kind of connectivity should or should not exist. We see that some of the checks pass, some of the checks fail here. And in particular, we just created a check that connectivity should exist from internet to the web application over HTTP. This is the check that we just created. And currently we see that this check fails. Now the idea is that when this problem is actually fixed in the network, this check should start to pass. Okay, so going back to the, to the original problem. So there is a problem, web application will not work as expected and the application engineer has created a ticket. Now, the ticket is with the network engineer, and network engineer starts with the same search view, and he sees that there will not be any connectivity from the internet to the web application over HTTP. So there are no results found. So the, the network engineer wants to know, if the traffic is not delivered, what is going to happen to this traffic? I will remove the delivered filter in the search query, to broaden the search a little bit to see what is happening to this traffic if it is not delivered to its intended destination. At the bottom part, in the bottom uh, part of the UI, you see that there are two paths that match the query that I specified. The traffic, uh, let's explore the first path here. The traffic starts at the internet location, goes through a couple of devices, and then gets dropped at the bottom. So what this means is the traffic is actually going to, this device happens to be a firewall device. So we see that the traffic will be dropped at the firewall. That's fine. But what the network engineer is interested in is, is the network layer, the routing and the switching components of the network, are they correctly configured to deliver the traffic to its intended destination? That's his concern, that's his responsibility. So this is where permit all mode comes in. Basically, he turns on permit all mode, and let me explain what happens here. Permit all mode basically searches for traffic as if all the firewalls in the network magically permit all the traffic to pass through them, regardless of what rules are specified in the firewall. So this allows the network engineer to analyze just the network layer, the routing and the switching components. Now, we see a lot more paths at the bottom. In fact, there are 32 paths. Let's explore the first path. Again, like before, the traffic starts from the internet location. It goes much further now, and it goes all the way to this ESXi virtual switch, which is where the web application will actually be located. So in permit all mode, we see that the traffic will be delivered all the way to its intended destination. In other words, the network engineer can be assured, can, can rest assured that the network the network component is correctly configured. It, it's doing its job. It will deliver the traffic to the web application.
not only that, he can click on each device along the path to see exactly what is happening to this traffic at each hop along the path. For example, I click on this router here at the bottom, and on the right side, we see the details of what is happening to this traffic. The traffic enters this interface, GE002, and leaves the device on this interface, GE007. The traffic is L3 routed because there is a route destined to this particular slash 32 prefix in, in the WORF internet out. And this is the next hop and the output port for this particular route. There will be an ARP lookup and followed by L2 forwarding. Not only that, I can click on this link that says C device state, which shows the exact lines of configuration or state that is responsible for this behavior that we are observing for this traffic on this device. Very, very fine grained. Let's look at a few more devices down the path. I'll click on this device, it says NAT. The interesting behavior here is that the traffic is being NATed from the public WIP to the private WIP. And a bit down the path, there's another device. This is actually the load balancer, where the traffic is getting load balanced from the WIP to a server pool here on the right side. And tracing it further down the path, we see that the traffic will be delivered all the way to its destination in permit all mode. Okay, so going back to the problem again, the network engineer has looked at this and has seen that the networking layer is correctly configured. So it is basically the problem of the firewalls. The firewalls, firewalls are blocking the traffic. So he passes the ticket on to the security engineer. Starting from the same view, the security engineer looks at the path and sees that there are two devices along the path. These are basically two firewall devices where the ACL tag is struck off. What this means is there are rules in these firewalls that block the traffic, but we have ignored them because we are in permit all mode. Clicking on this device shows the exact firewall rules that will block the traffic. For example, here is a rule that blocks all the traffic destined to these two IP addresses, one of which is our web application IP address. Again, clicking on this link, C device state, shows the exact lines of configuration that are responsible for this particular behavior being that is being observed. Clicking on the next firewall, we see something similar. There's a rule that blocks all traffic to this particular IP destination, which is the web applications, private web. And again, can click on C device state to see the exact lines of configuration that is responsible for this behavior. Okay, so this is a problem. Now the network engineer knows that there are two firewalls along the path that will block this traffic. And his hypothesis is if he either adds rules or modifies rules in these firewalls to unblock this traffic, this will fix the problem. But how can he be sure that the change that he plans to make will have the intended effect, that is it will solve the problem at hand. And more importantly, how can he be sure that it will not break the network in unintended ways? What if it opens some security hole? What if it blocks some other critical traffic? This is where the power of forward predict comes in. Forward predict, uh, if you recall, basically provides an ability to try out changes within the model and see their effect without touching the actual production network. Let's go back to this device that, was, that has a firewall rule that is blocking the traffic. I click C device state again, and now, I'm going to try some changes in a sandbox. I click edit in sandbox, and I will add a rule that permits traffic to this to these servers, but only HTTP traffic. I click save to sandbox. Then I go to the next device down the path, click C device state again. These are the lines of configuration that are responsible for this behavior. This one is basically a default deny rule that is blocking traffic by default. Right above it, there is a rule that permits HTTPS traffic. So we are going to modify that to permit HTTP traffic as well. I click Save to Sandbox. And then I click Analyze Changes. So what's happening now here is that the system takes in the changes that have been proposed rebuilds the model, 
recomputes all the possible traffic paths through the network and reruns the checks that were previously defined and compares them and sees how the check results have changed. Here we see the check results before the changes and we see the check results after the changes, a side-by-side -side comparison. And we see that for this particular check that was previously failing, it now passes. More importantly, we see that the checks that previously passed continue to pass. In other words, if the security engineer makes these two changes on these two devices, it will fix the problem at hand. And more importantly, it will not break something else in the network. The other important aspect is that going forward, this check will forever ensure that the connectivity to the web application exists and will trigger an alert whenever any change breaks it in an unintentional way. Now the security engineer can request a change window with full confidence of the exact devices he needs to touch and the exact changes he needs to make to resolve the issue. Now the key here is that the various stakeholders could all interact around the behavioral model of forward enterprise to quickly and efficiently operate the network. In fact, all the information that is displayed in the UI is exposed via a REST API that can be accessed by any team or any tool. For example, here's a simple web application that's built for the application team to test application connectivity without showing a lot of network specific details. The application engineer can just enter a fight tuple, a source IP, a destination IP, uh, the IP protocol and source port and destination port and see whether this application components will have connectivity or not. Now here, I basically brought over the same IP addresses from the demo that we just saw, and the destination port is 80, which is HTTP, and I'll click Submit. And I get a very high level answer that this traffic will be dropped. This is what the, this is what the application engineer cares about. And then we can turn on permit all mode or ACLS mode and see if the traffic will be delivered if ACLs were turned off. I click Submit and I see that the traffic will be delivered to its destination if ACLs were turned off. This is an example of a simple application that's built on using the REST API of the Forward Enterprise Platform. All right, let's go back to the slides. So to recap, we saw how Forward Enterprise makes it super easy to understand and operate networks by diagnosing issues, verifying policy, and validating changes even before they're actually made in the production network. In fact, there are a whole bunch of use cases of Forward Enterprise that our customers are finding extremely valuable. Let's go through a few of them very quickly. The first one is documentation and diagramming. A lot of our customers use the topology that's inferred by the Forward Enterprise model as a live document and diagram of the current state of the network. Another use case is end-to-end -end path analysis. Customers use forward to better understand the behavior of the network, especially at the front end of a trouble ticket. Another use case is change window systems to make configuration changes quickly and correctly. Configuration sanity, which is to always ensure that the network-wide configuration is sane and correct. Custom verification. This is to ensure that critical application connectivity always exists and Critical security policy is always correctly implemented and enforced within the network. Another use case is modeling proposed changes, which is basically to try changes within a sandbox environment in the model in software before making them in the actual production network. Uh, a very popular use case is developer self-service, which is using Forward Enterprise to expose the network behavior to app developers so that they can understand how their application is performing or how their application is doing vis-a-vis -vis the network. And another very interesting use case is historical analysis. Basically, customers use the models that have been generated by Forward Enterprise over a period of time as a historical repository of the network's behavior and use it to understand how the behavior of the network changed and evolved over time. So uh, again, taking a step back, at Forward, we are pioneering the network verification technology. At the same time, we strive to make this available to networks of today without requiring a hardware refresh. 
So here's a growing list of vendor devices that are supported within the Forward Enterprise platform. If you see your network devices in here, you should be able to get set up and going with Forward Enterprise in as little as 15 minutes. If you don't see your devices, no problem, just let us know. We are always looking for customer feedback to prioritize our device support. So in summary, Forward Enterprise brings some truly unique capabilities in the form of network verification to understand and diagnose issues, to test and verify end-to-end -end behavior, and to validate changes even before they're made in the actual production network. So uh, our, our value proposition is that Forward Enterprise reduces cost, increases agility, and de-risks operations of today's business critical networks and as well as networks of tomorrow. So please contact us at uh, sales at forwardnetworks.com for uh, another in-depth demo and to chat about how our customers are using Forward Enterprise in the networks. Thank you very much. And we have, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. All right, we have a question. The question is, how frequently do companies need to pull configurations into the model to stay current? And how practical is that? That's a great question. Uh, and unfortunately, there is no single answer. So the, the answer that I would give is, it depends on the use case. And in fact, in practice, what we find is that our platform can pull in the configuration and build the model and make the model available as quickly as possible. It turns out that typically the bottleneck are the network devices themselves, especially if they happen to be old legacy devices. They take a while to ship out this data. Uh, but some of the modern devices, it's changing with some of the modern devices that expose their data via well-structured APIs. So that's, that's improving a lot. And again, to give a very concrete answer, uh, in practice, we see that some of our customers uh, typically pull in the configuration and the build, build a model about once a day or once every few hours, and that works out pretty well for them. Any more questions? Okay, uh, I see one other question. Uh, if the ACL changes entered in forward predict, you made affected routing, example, by blocking a BGP session from being established and causing routes to change, would forward predict correctly model all of that? That's a great question. And uh, the answer today, right now, the answer for this particular scenario is no. So we are able to model ACL changes that only have local effect. Basically, it affects the behavior of the device locally and doesn't have any propagating changes. In fact, all the changes that we model today in forward predict, basically ACL changes and NAT changes, are the ones that have local effect. If, if the change has end-to-end -end effect, for example, changing the RIB or FIB of the devices because it affects BGP sessions, that's something that we won't be able to model today, but that's something that we're working on. Okay, looks like we are uh, at the end of our session. Thank you very much for attending the webinar and uh, we look forward to having you at our future webinars. Thank you.